Let's start to take in this question. And the first thing I'm going to point out is, let's contrast this to the first example we did last time. When we had a look at simple harmonic motion in the first instance, I handed you an equation. I said, there's some object, and it's moving according to, and then it was like, x equals, and then you had everything in the equation, right? Something like, I'm trying to remember here, 2 sine pi on 2 t plus pi on 6 plus 3 minus 3, something like that, right? So you got handed the equation, and then you could literally read out everything that you needed, amplitude, center of motion, everything that you wanted to know was just there in the equation, as long as you knew where to look. This is the reverse of that situation, right? You aren't handed an equation. You've got to come up with an equation yourself off the basis of all of this information. So we're trying to reverse engineer what's going on. Have a think about this. In fact, what we'll do is we'll write them down together. Tell me what are the salient details, the important uh, numbers that you need to take note of. What's the first number that you see which we need to include in our equation? Period. The period. What's the period? Pi on three seconds. So, if you haven't, by the way, jot this down all with me, maybe up the top, maybe you've progressed past this and that's fine, but I want us to actually have this in an important spot separately. Pi on three seconds. So we've got a period and we also have a unit of time that's handy. Okay, what else have you got for me? Just read it off. Say it again. Position. position. What can you tell me about position? Okay, so I have a position. I'm just going to leave a space here for a second. I've got a position of x equals 3 centimeters. Is it 3 centimeters above? Yes. yes, right? So I also know from this, right, what have I got? I've got not only a value, I've also got units, and I also now also have a dimension of motion, right? I mentioned before uh, when we first talked about simple moment motion, you can have, say, left, right. Uh, in this case, we've got up-down, right? So the question defines that for us. Now, I've left this off here because if you have a look carefully at the question, it says, how does it introduce this position? It says, at a certain time. Is there anything else, like as you continue reading, is there anything else that gives you a, a hook that decides when that time is? OK, so there's a velocity here, right? At the same instant, right? And it is moving. Before I get to write that down, right, does that tell us anything about like when's the time of day or is there some kind of I have to let t equal something or other? Do you see any other clues? There's nothing, right? So what that actually indicates for us is I can kind of decide what that will be, right? What do you think is like a convenient, easy to you know, substitute value in for the at a certain moment? What would you call that? Let's call it time zero, right? So that's a decision that we've made. So I'm actually going to put that in a different color. I'm going to say t equals zero. This is my certain, I think they said a certain moment. Is that right? This is my certain moment. So they haven't defined it. So I did, OK? All right, and then let's just come back to, Anger, you suggested a velocity, right? So at this same certain moment, I have a velocity. V equals, now, at this point, we've so far just been like writing down numbers pretty much as stated. But at this moment, you actually have to think carefully because there's a minor modification we need to make based on the numbers that are provided here um, to what we're actually going to jot down here. You suggest a velocity. Velocity is actually not the word that's provided in the question. What, question, what word do they provide? Speed. What's the difference between speed and velocity again? Do, speed doesn't have direction. We actually already have language of this all the way back from extension 1 and extension 2. When you have a quantity that includes direction, we call that a vector, right? When you have a quantity that doesn't include direction, we call that a scalar, right? Which, by the way, it's a complete coincidence that v for velocity and vector, s for speed and scalar, but that's always the way that I remembered it. Now, I could write, and I will in a second, a 24 over here, but look again at the question and what it tells us about the direction of the velocity. The speed doesn't tell us, but there's another word that does. What's the word that tells us about direction here? Moving towards the center of motion. Towards the center of motion. Now, it says 3 centimeters above the center of motion. I actually kind of sneakily said x equals 3 here. That gives us another thing, just like I wrote in blue here, that tells us about the center of motion. They didn't specify it. I kind of have implied it. Where is my center of motion if at this certain moment I'm at x equals 3? Below. Say it again? Below. 
below. It's, it's definitely going to be below, but I can say more than it's below. It's exactly going to be x equals 0, right? Because if this is 3 centimeters above, then x equals 3 makes the center of motion at x equals 0. Does that make sense? I could have just as easily said arbitrarily, because they didn't say so, let's suppose the center of motion was x equals 1. Then at that certain moment, I wouldn't be at x equals 3. I'd be at x equals 4, 3 centimeters above it, right? But I've actually implied this as the center of motion. Right, so I'm just highlighting for you, <coughs> excuse me, we make certain decisions based on what you see, uh, based on what's defined for you and what's not defined for you, and we make them easy for us, right? Uh, we could have had the center of motion elsewhere, but why not include a constant of zero because it's easy to work with. All right, now just finally coming back, you said this is toward the center of motion, right? So if you're currently above, then which direction is back towards the center? It's down, right? So if I'm writing velocity here, that's got to be minus. Does that make sense? That has to be negative. Uh, and because I've included units everywhere else here as well, my velocity is going to be in centimeters. centimeters per second. OK. Let's take stock again. Have a look at the question. Have I captured everything that the question has told me? Look OK to you. Have I got all the data? Have I missed anything? What do you reckon, Vern? Are you like, mm. uh, I don't know. It tells you it's in simple Okay, good. This will be this will be our next step. Okay, so I'm gonna go and write down part A. I haven't actually done anything yet. I've just like taken stock of the situation. Um, but I I hope you realize how important this pre-thinking is. It's often the case in a question, right? So we know it's simple harmonic motion. Okay, so I could write a couple of things here, right? I could write a differential equation. I could say, well, I'll just write it down. X double dot equals negative n squared x. Now, just remember, right? I actually can write x and not just x minus c because I've already specified a center of motion. And if I say it can be at the origin, then I can use my like simple, simple, nice version, simple version of simple harmonic motion, right? Uh, the most basic form. So I can write that down. Have a look at what question part A is asking us to do. It says determine the equation of motion. So not the differential equation. Now, we have at least two choices. Actually, I have more than two choices, but to keep it simple, I've got two choices for what can satisfy this, and they're both on the reference sheet. Do you remember them? What are our sort of basic two choices? Cause yeah, cause and sine. Some of you have already looked into the, uh, further into the exercise. I've noticed, actually, if you wanted, you could put sine plus cause in here, some version of that, and it would still satisfy this differential equation. But we don't, like, we're deciding this equation of motion, so let's keep it simple, okay? Now, you really, truly can choose either sine or cause. Here. And in fact, later on, I'm going to show you what happens when you choose a less helpful version. You'll see why it's less helpful. In this instance here, I'm going to decide, and I'll, um, I'll leave it as a thing for you to think about in the next six or seven minutes, right? Why I've chosen this particular version between sine and cos. I'm going to go with cos. Now, why would I decide cos? Think about this, right? Have a think about everything. Like, I've made this decision on the basis of all of this information, right? You don't have to do it. Um, I will show you what happens when sine occurs here and how the question changes, right? But we're all still going to get the same answers because it still satisfies the differential equation. It's going to work fine, OK? Let's try and feed into this, right? Do I know what the amplitude is of motion? In this information here, do I know? Now, it's a classic error to say, yes, I do know, because look, I've got this displacement here. Like, I think maybe I can go up three and I can go down three. Tell me why this is actually not the uh, amplitude of motion. Can someone suggest to me why actually I don't have enough information to tell me that? What do you reckon, Jack? It's not, uh, we do not know if it's a maximum. Yeah, uh, we call these the extremities of motion. Do you remember in that uh, question we did on Tuesday, uh, one of the questions was, out of a particular equation, tell me where the extremities are. And if you know what this is, then you can say where the extremities are. But you haven't been told that that's an extremity. So I can't reverse engineer that, right? I know I'm at that point, but I don't know if that's actually an extreme, right? There's another actually piece of information that tells me that can't be an extreme. Have a look back at what we've, we've just written it down, right? What are you thinking, Jody? Velocity. Think about this for a moment, right? Let's uh, draw, draw for me over on the, somewhere on the side here, right? Draw for me a quick and dirty 
uh, cosine graph, like so, because that's the one that I've chosen, right? If you're at an extreme of motion, so I've got, I've got three on this particular graph. Here's one, and here are the other two, right? Think to your knowledge of differential calculus. What can you tell me about the velocity at any of those extremes of motion? Should be zero, right? Because you take the derivative. These are, these are turning points. They're, more importantly, they're stationary points, right? So that literally means at these exact moments, your velocity has to be zero. So that tells you not just, oh, maybe this isn't. Like, it can't be an extreme of motion, OK? So therefore, I'm going to have to park this. I can't find A just yet. That gives me two other choices, right? N and alpha. Which is a more sensible one to go for first? N. N. Why N? What does N tell us? Period. It tells us about period, doesn't it? And I actually know, it was the first thing I wrote down, I know what the period is. It's pi on 3. So how would you write this? I assume several of you already got the answer, but I need some working here, right? So what am I going to write that helps me get to a value of N? What do you reckon? OK, so I can say this thing here, the pi on 3, is 2 pi over n. That's how I calculate period, right? But that's a known value. It's pi on 3. I think it'd be nice if I actually said what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm sort of invoking my knowledge of the period, and then I write this equation. OK? Uh, it looks to me like, well, what are you going to get for n out of this? Because your pi's cancel, right? And then you can flip this over to multiply by 2. Off you go. OK? So that's good, that's handy. I've got this now. x equals a cos 6t plus alpha. OK, so then at this moment, you pause and you think, how can I go from here to work out a or alpha? Has anyone got a suggestion about what I could do next? OK, Joe, where are you going to start? OK, I can find a derivative for this, right? I've got an x, and I can get an x dot. Now, just before I go on and do this, right, it is not immediately obvious to go and differentiate at this point. Because I'm like, but I still have like unknown stuff, right? Why differentiate now? Can someone tell me why it's actually useful to get not just a displacement function, but a velocity function? What does it allow us to do? Yeah? Uh, it gives us the velocity at uh, um, x equals 3. OK, so see these two pieces of information that I jotted down here, right? I can talk about this one when t equals 0, but I can't yet talk about this one because I didn't have a, well, I still don't have a velocity equation, OK? The reason why this is going to be useful for me is I'm trying to find out what these unknowns are, right? I need more equations to be able to use them, and I want to access this data. Make sense? 